Welcome back guys. In this video, we are going to learn another feature that was introduced in version 6. And that is the capability to have a story within a story. This is especially useful when you have components that need to be put together to get the overall UI. Let's take a look at an example. For this example, we want to create a simple newsletter subscription form which has an input control and a subscribe button. I'm going to begin by creating a new folder called subscription. Now this folder does not need its own component and CSS files. We're going to use the existing components and simply create a story. So create a new file called subscription.stories.js. Here, we write the story for the newsletter subscription form. First, import React. Next, instead of importing the button and the input components, we import the stories we've written for them. So I'm going to import the primary button story and the large input story. Next, we write the default export. So export default just the title is going to be form slash subscription finally we write the story so export const primary subscription is going to be equal to an arrow function within the story we include the other two stories that we have imported so we are going to return a react fragment where we are going to have a large input element and a primary button element. If you now take a look at the browser, you can see the component works as expected. Now there are two advantages of writing stories within stories. First, you reduce the amount of code you write. If you had to import the primary button and the large input components, you have to again specify all the props. The second advantage is that if you make changes in the other stories, it will automatically be reflected in this story as well. So if you change something in the primary button story, it automatically changes in the primary subscription story. So you don't have to maintain code in two different files, which is always good. However, there are disadvantages in writing stories like this as you won't be able to take full advantage of the args mechanism. What exactly is the args mechanism? Let's take a look at that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you guys in the next one.